today's show, Tesla's Model 3 suffers a bottleneck in its production, Nissan pushes its vision of vehicle to grid, and an autonomous electric drone that you could be taking to work in the not too distant future. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, Thanks for joining me. Following in the tyre tracks of the launch of the 2018 Nissan Leaf, with its larger capacity 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, the company has officially confirmed the 2018 Nissan ENV200 electric minivan will also come with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, giving an NEDC approved 283 kilometers per charge. And given that it's far larger and less aerodynamic than the Nissan Leaf, that's not a bad range. But I should of course caution that the NEDC range is overly optimistic to the Max. So expect a real world range closer to around 130 miles, that's 209 kilometers. Sadly too, while this van is amazing and I'd probably own one if I still lived in the UK, there are no plans to bring it stateside or to any other markets where previous generation ENV200 is currently not sold. Unless of course, it arrives as a grey import. Sorry. US buyers might be upset about the lack of ENV200, but there might be some hope if GM, which produces the gasoline ENV200 under license as the Chevy City Express, decides to make its smallest commercial van an electric vehicle. And while I severely doubt that it will, it might just happen thanks to news from GM this week that it intends to switch all of its vehicles to either battery electric or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in the not too distant future. Over the next 18 months, GM says it will bring two brand new all electric vehicles to market and by 2023 will introduce at least 20 new all-electric vehicles to market. It seems from GM's announcement that it views battery electric vehicles as the choice for the future of passenger cars, with hydrogen fuel cells being preferred for larger commercial and fleet vehicles and also for use in harsher environments. As to GM's prime market for large SUVs and pickup trucks, well, I think we're going to see a blend of hydrogen and battery electric offerings. The only thing left to do? Wait to see if GM is serious or not. With the third quarter of 2017 now officially behind us, Tesla announced its estimated production and delivery figures for the quarter this week. They show an overall growth in production and delivery for both Model S and Model X when compared to Q2 this year and Q3 last year, with a total of 26,150 vehicles delivered during the quarter. But while Model S and Model X did pretty well, Tesla only made 260 Model 3 cars during the quarter and delivered just 220. The reason? Bottlenecks at the Tesla Gigafactory and Tesla facility in Fremont, says the company, both of which have taken longer than it had hoped to get online. Tesla now says it's got everything running smoothly, but it's bad news for anyone who'd hoped that they'd be getting their Model 3 by the end of this year. As well as announce its longer range ENV200 electric minivan and hint at a Nismo variant of the 2018 Nissan Leaf, Nissan officially launched its X storage V2G hardware for Europe this week, taking an opportunity to lay out some of its goals for the technology looking forwards. In addition to building a microgrid system that will help local communities in areas around the world with no electricity grid, Nissan says it will be working with local municipalities in Europe to bring Nissan's electric ecosystem, that's V to G and an EV for those who don't know, to those who it feels needs it, as well as partner with organizations in disaster prone areas to build robust V to G solutions to ensure that power can continue to flow even if the grid's been destroyed. As someone who lives in an earthquake area, this last one is very interesting to me, so I'm hoping to see some of this tech coming stateside very soon. Hot on the heels of General Motors' plan to electrify its fleet, Ford announced this week that it will be building a brand new team called Team Edison. Yeah, I know. Within the automaker, whose job it is to help make a rapid transition to electric vehicles. As part of this, Ford says it will be shifting a third of the funding it currently spends on ICE vehicles 
to electric vehicle development. And at the same time, it says it will be working heavily on developing new revenue models for autonomous and electric vehicles, with the end goal of becoming a mobility company rather than just an automaker. Again, the proof is in the pudding, but just as of last week's show, I think this news shows just how seriously mainstream automakers are getting about this new, exciting world of electric transportation. Unarguably Tesla's strongest asset, its global network of supercharger stations celebrated a milestone this week with the official launch of the 1,000th Tesla supercharger location in the world. Located in Pennsylvania, this 1,000th supercharger site now means that there are just under 7,000 supercharger stalls and 1,000 locations that you can charge your Tesla Model S, Model X or Model 3 at around the world. But just like its goal of producing 5,000 cars per week by the end of the year, Tesla is looking like it's got its work cut out if it wants to reach its own goal of having 10,000 supercharger stalls installed and active by the end of the year. I really hope Tesla reaches that goal, but it's going to be quite a lot of work considering we're only three months away from the end of the year, right? I regularly cover all sorts of interesting vehicles on this show, and today we're going to be touching base with one of the weirdest, a self-balancing electric motorcycle concept that Honda says it will unveil at the Tokyo Motor Show later this month. Called the Honda Riding Assist E Concept Motorcycle, this all-electric ride is effectively an evolution of the Honda Uni Cub and can not only keep itself upright but also follow behind the rider in autonomous mode, just as this gasoline version of the same idea from CES earlier this year does. As a biker, I'm not sure how I feel about the idea of self-balancing bikes, but I'm still very curious to see it in the flesh. Although Tesla CEO Elon Musk gets most coverage on this show in relation to the company's work on electric vehicles and, more recently, his association with the Boring Company and its work on tunnels. But Musk hit the headlines at the end of last week when he suggested during a SpaceX event that, in addition to using his reusable Falcon rockets to get people to Mars, SpaceX could quite easily launch a passenger service that could make any city no more than rocket ride away. Literally going up into the air and then coming back down above the chosen city, the rockets could make air travel as we know it today obsolete. But in order to get those rockets up in the air is going to take a whole lot of fuel. And while I haven't done the maths as to how much fuel it's going to take, I'm guessing it's not all that environmentally friendly. At least, less so than the Hyperloop. Watch this space. Now that plug-in cars are becoming the norm in the world, we're slowly starting to see larger, traditionally gas-guzzling vehicles join the plug-in party. For example, I've got the Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan on loan this week, and of course I'm sure you're familiar with the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which, by the way, I should note I incorrectly said on last week's show would not have Chidemo for the US. It will and the Volvo XC90 T8 plug-in SUV. Well, this week, Land Rover joined in the party, launching the Range Rover Sport PHEV. Combining an 85 kilowatt electric motor with a 13.1 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack, Land Rover says the Range Rover Sport PHEV will do about 30 miles in all electric range and notes that the electric motor makes off-roading easier than ever before thanks to its torque characteristics. Given I liked the all-electric Defender prototype that Land Rover made a few years ago, I'm really eager to see if any of its DNA is visible in this high-end plug-in Chelsea tractor. Have you ever sat in traffic in a busy city and wondered where your flying car is? After all, it's now 2017, and according to plenty of science fiction, we should all have flying cars by now, right? Well, this week, Passenger Drone, a three-year-old startup company focusing on autonomous electric flight, revealed video of its first autonomous passenger drone flight. Powered by a slew of electric motors all whizzing furiously above your head, the experience looks frankly amazing. But as Autoblog Green notes, the field of passenger drones is already pretty crowded, so it's going to be interesting to see which of the dozen or more companies investing in the tech actually make it to market first. And finally, if you're a Gen Xer like me, and you were a pretty nerdy kid, you might sometimes look at Elon Musk and wonder why you couldn't have come up with the same kind of tech awesomeness he seems to do on a regular basis at whim. Well, it seems we're not alone, and now there's a song about just how inadequate Elon Musk can make you feel. Called Elon Musk is Making Me Sad, it's a catchy, tongue-in-cheek story of one nerd, in this case Matt Sharp, bassist for Weezer, who had a similar start in life to Musk but somehow didn't end up making the same impact on the world. 
at least in the same way. It's a cute little ditty and the link to the SoundCloud file is in the description below. Go listen to it. And on that melancholy tone, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the moment a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.